Okay folks, I just stopped the Dremel a moment ago, just so you can get an idea. It's the same piece that I was just working on a second ago. I've just put a new texture line on, and this texture line, while it's rotating, is to indicate the inside diameter of the tuning. So, uh, I'll put things somewhere. Now, using my woodwork skill from wood turning, now, I'll get this around. X Acto number 11 blade. Uh, I've got two different ones here, the square end job, chisel nose as I call it. And then you've also got, and these two are very handy tools. The other alternative, was known as a box cutter, retractable knife blade, safety knife, either way. So I've got any one of these three at my disposal at the moment. Accuracy if need be. Now, my experience is with knife blades and plastic, I can actually shave them sideways. Again, I should be using two hands on the knife, not just one. You can hear it cutting anyhow, it's shaving. Right. Changing the angle off the excess. You don't want to go too heavy with this, really you don't. Too easy to make mistakes. I made a few mistakes in my life. So if you don't learn unless you learn from the mistakes. I'm trying to do this single handed, which I shouldn't be. So understand that I should have somebody holding the camera or have the camera mounted. Both, both hands on the tool, I'll be able to control it a lot better. And as the black text mark seems to have disappeared a bit down here, it's only just there. So what I'm trying to do is bring the inner diameter to the diameter I require. And using the sharpest edge, I'm trying to get that it's parallel to what I need. And all I'm doing is slowly feeding the center out. It's a bit like using a boring bar. Now this could quite easily bite in. I don't believe my knife blade is quite as sharp as it should be. But this is the best one perhaps for this purpose. I hope you're, you're actually learning from what I'm doing. Again, I apologise if I'm being boring. Yes, I can use a drill to do the same sort of job. Why don't I? Because I'm just showing you a different method. Alright. You can use this for deburring as well. Hypothetically, you put it at an angle. Run the deburr. Run across the face of it. Alright. I can also bring this knife blade in at a different angle. see how that's working. I'm just showing you these different methods because they are available and there's all different skills that you can have. See if I've changed my angle of your blade again. Right. Just jump around here with the camera.
trying to give you guys at home and your modelers as clear as possible view. I'm looking to see the viewfinder as well as over the camera. My camera angles might not be quite best. Blade and start this paper. Now, let's just see by that now. There's a the taper angle we got. You may still be able to see all the tall layers of plastic. The Dremel will take down the bulk of it. This is the finer side of it. Yeah, you can see might be able to see right about here where the tip of the blade is. I've got a bit of a groove. Yeah. Down here is where the parallel starts. And from here to the taper starts, up to the top. So, I'm not quite correct at my angles at the moment. I'm just trying to get this in position. too heavy because that way you either break your blade or have the tool taken out of your hand. I can't enforce safety enough on something like this. So it's up to you at home if you're doing this you take the absolute maximum sort of safety in mind knowing that this could be possibly dangerous for you. I know my limitations. That's the difference. a knife blade vibrating on, on the plastic. Some it scrapes. Trying to give you a bird's eye view of what I'm doing. It's not necessarily the easiest. But it is knocking the blade around a bit. Now, if I take away this particular blade, I bring in the chisel end. Well, that's what I call the chisel end anyway. How does this work? Well, I'm just doing with this. I'm expecting it to chunk in somewhere. Uh, yeah, we've got it here. Let's see, throw me blade around a bit. Right. Now, typically, like a chisel, you dig into it. So we can show what happens here. I'm trying to do this without getting yourself too close to the, the lathe chuck. Now dragging across the top of the cutting edge. So you can see the 
see the things in up here. But now you can sort of get an idea. You can now see the two different tapers. So here's the box cutter. Check the knife blade. Chatter to it. This should take out some of the high spots. It may not take out the lows until you get all the high spots down. Okay, so you get an idea. Okay. You can see the tape on it better now. Now, what I still have to do are the last two layers in here. So, that's going to be another method. The needle file, I'll end up filing that a little bit. Shavings everywhere. Now, two layers in. It's got to be my fold point. Just there. Down here, I've got a, a hollow. Down here, it's got to come down a little bit further. This first mark. It's basically going to be the top end of the taper. That one will be the smallest end or the bottom end of the taper. This here needs to become even. It's not quite even yet. You see how it's got the black and white flicker to it. The white is where the texture hasn't touched, the black is where the texture has. So the texture mark highlights at least where the texture has been touching. This step that's in the middle, and if you can see that step, the step's got to be brought down. This taper here is going to change again slightly. Currently, get the camera around correctly, that should be inside of the chimney. Currently, this is the outside of the taper. I hope you can be understanding what I'm doing at the moment. So this taper from here down to there is going to change because I'm going to bring the taper down somewhere around about that diameter. That white ring you see on the end should be as little as I need. And how do I know that? Without measuring it and marking it. I haven't got actual dimensions to work to, but visually, it's 
gelecek kanalı bu taraftan iyi 80 metre this is the beginning and perhaps the end result this is what I'm looking towards alright don't forget this diameter here is going to be slightly smaller than this one's here Two cones, it'll be two different tapers. Thank you, those folks. I'll show how this works up here. It's like a break in there, and this is good to have. If I break this lever here, as it pulls out, it expands inside and drives it. That helps, or well, hopefully help, the folks at home to understand what's going on in the background. I'll go back to my scalpel blade. Try to get which is my best angle of attack. Oh, sorry folks, nearly lost my camera. And remember I'm supposed to do this with two hands, not one. And the thing is when you're doing this, you should have a nice sharp blade. Now what I'm doing, I'm working from this particular point back. Why am I doing it this way? Because if that is my reference point right here, and that black text mark is, and we're working around to this black text mark, basically, if I get this on the correct angle, I should get a straight line. I hope I'm explaining this clearly for you. I do not want anyone else harming themselves trying to copy what I'm doing. I don't want to be blamed for someone else's misfortune. Shaving off any other way. Right, so what we have here, folks, that's the inside part of the chimney. Now, from here, we've got this little distance, 
and then the outward cone. Alright. So what I'm seeing and what you're seeing might be two different things. Alright. I'm just changing the angles so I can get it correct. Again, you can see how that tape has happened. It's hard to stop for the moment. We rotate by hand. Alright. So you can now see what we've achieved so far. I'm hoping this is helping you at home. So I've got from here two layers of plastic, then another ten layers down here. That's the groove we've got the machine out. Now I'm going to reduce this diameter and change it to taper slightly. Alright. Now for a proper machinist somebody who's highly skilled, highly qualified they say, oh, this is ordinary tape for turning alright so somebody who's a um, machinist that understands everything clearly but a hobbyist like yourselves might not Camera is close to the cutting tool, so we're going to get. I could perhaps go closer, but the clarity isn't really there. I'm calling the back taper because it's on the back edge of where I've been working. Sorry, folks, I'm going to move the camera away from where it should be. I'm not actually focusing through the viewfinder at times. If you're using brass or steel, machine up a model locomotive part, you do it differently. But because I'm using layers of upon layers of plastic and you can see how the taper has now become yes I still have that groove sitting right there right. so this is going to come down a bit more this taper is going to become a bit more narrow than what it is Just so I can do things properly, I'm going to stop the camera for a moment and give you another camera position soon. Okay folks, I've just stopped the uh, lathe for a moment. Or it has disengaged it. In brief. Two chimneys.
size is a bit close, but I think I have to bore out the hole the um, chimney, the new one that is. I think we can do that with the, the drill. But you can sort of see in here. There we go. It's getting there. Yes, you can see all the, all the mess up here on the lathe. So basically what I've got, I've got the pointer out, there we go, there's my pointer. So yeah, basically we've got the front taper, the back taper and the parallel section. Now it's only done in black text at the moment of course, but if I was to rotate around, I'll see the clear patch. It's only minor flat spot, but it's not too bad. So you can now see the, the parallel section is there, beginning the taper, the end of the taper, or the back taper, and the, and the front taper. I hope that hasn't been too boring with you so far, or for you, if that is. I'm getting this down to finer details now. So this reference point here, the black line, that's reminding me top two layers <coughs> and the remaining lower layers. While it's spinning, I can see it's a groove point here. <coughs> I don't know if you... <coughs> oh boy, I don't know about you folks, I don't know if you can see there, but I can. Wobbling now. Oh, that, that'll help. Right here. Just come up here to the light. So there's a little bit more to be done to it. Seeing as how the um, piece works its way loose, let's come over here. <sighs> I like to have the radio on when I'm busy working, but because of YouTube, <sighs> and these buggers put adverts on everybody's videos, whether they've been monetized or not. However, this is a test fit. Alright. Before I go down to doing much more. There it is just sitting in place. And as a reference photo. Let's check out this um, comparison between the, the chimney and the model. So it's a long slender taper, a short top, it's pretty broad diameter at the top. And we come down to here. Have I got this correct? No, that'll be your decision no doubt. But I think I'm going to have to drill out the top a little. But yeah, I'm just studying the, the two images together. But yeah, certainly folks, that's how I achieve spinning up a lathe, um, spinning up a chimney in the lathe using layered plastic or laminations. Okay, so I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, here we have the, another different camera shot. They're both my Sierra number threes side by side. In real life they were exactly the same locomotive as well. So from the original Allen Hale 
um, acted part of Casey Jones in the late 60s, early 70s. Following on directly behind that was Petticoat Junction. And not for many, many years later did Back to Future number 3 come about. So, I'm after a third one of these Sierras, so I can do the Casey Jones episode. So, if anyone's got one out there, no doubt you probably charge me top dollar for it. <laughs> but if you've got one that's half a decent working condition, I'd, I'd grab it. That way I can have all three of them side by side. The main reason for lining up both these Sierras, so you can see the difference in chimneys. I'm using the black background one to hopefully highlight the white plastic. So you can see there is a difference between chimneys. Back to the future part three. It's a little more broader, slightly different angle on the taper. Petticoat Junction. Yeah, so compare the differences here. You should be able to notice some sort of difference. Uh, some of you probably spun it how I've done my um, smoke coming out of the locomotive. That trade secret. I wish I could keep it that way. Bit of MIG welding wire up the guts, cotton ball strung out, you might be able to see the MIG welding wire. That can be painted white or grey or black depending. Uh, <clears throat> I've got it down the middle. If you're a really good modeler you can sculpture that smoke to look like real smoke. I've done that using some grained um, food colouring dye in water, mixed it and used a little squirty bottle and squirted the um, cotton wool until it had that nice texture about it. So that's representing the first stage of going back to the future of course. After that went the yellow, then the red, then the whole thing blew up bits just about. Whereas Petticoat Junction, there's still a lot more work to be done on this one. Again you can see the leading four wheels on both locomotives. Let's see if I can bring it in a bit for you. So yeah, cut the pinpoints off them, paint the wheels red, back to the future, they've got to be black. Still be cut the pin pinpoints off. Now, you can sort of see here while I'm at the front end, both have working headlights of course. So, realistically speaking, there's a bit of difference with and without the, the headlight, headlamp top onto it. I'll try and make that up next, hopefully. But this is a comparison between both chimneys. There is a slight difference, yes, they're about the same height. The tapers are supposed to be different. So, very soon I'll get this chimney painted black. You see I've got to make the smoke box door yet, as well. So that's another challenge ahead of me. I've already now looked back at two steam domes. There is a difference. The steam dome I've got on Petticoat Junction's Hooterville Cannibal, which is this one here, which I machined up yesterday, or finished machining yesterday after not getting onto it for over a week. This is what this one should be. You can see the exhaust on the steam generator. That's another thing I've got to put onto Petticoat Junction's logo. Uh, so to have two of these to compare with, it's one of those things where you can actually get the comparison between Petticoat Junction and Back to the Future Part 3. Now the green coloured plastic for the bodywork is going to change. It's like a gunmetal sort of colour. It's supposed to be that is. It's like something between a bluish grey colour, something along those lines. But the paint job will be done accordingly to the TV series. The wheels are painted red on this one. Look at the wheels on that. Just as per the movies. So if I can get a third one of these Sierras, Tyco Mantua jobs, as long as I, I can get them running, all the rest of it's super, sort of, I don't know, superficial one since. While we're here, comparing both locomotives, uh, there's the, the chance of it before a load gets put in and after a load gets put in. 
Right. So this is my other next step to get onto. I'm just working on this in part, little bits at a time. But for you at home or wherever you are in the world, you can get to see how it's supposed to look. If you're modelling the original Casey Jones with Alan Hale, or you're modelling Petticoat Junction, or Back to the Future Part 3, that's the locomotive you're actually really needing to get a hold of. And there's a lot of work, especially if parts are missing. So, consider my progress so far. I've got this one working. Dirty wheels, bed, contacts, etc. But for Petticoat Junction to become the Hooterville Cannibal, I've got to get rid of the AT and SF logos. Whole tent is going to be painted in red rather than like plastic red. So the running boards on the Hooterville, that's got to be changed. I can't remember if they're wood in colour or if they're um, black on the top. Definitely going to be black underneath, of course. The green plastic's going to be um, full repaint. Even the air compressor on the side will end up having to change as I find out details on that. <coughs> Chimney very soon will be painted black as per Back to the Future 3. So that's the, the two locos, the two different TV series, two different movies. And up here my reference. Back to the future part three. You can see the chimney on that. Don't from the glare it's coming off the plastic. And then Petticoat Junction. So I'm trying to get this so that there's no light glare of the plastic, but right, so there's Petticoat Junction, Back to the Future Part 3. I hope I'm getting there. <laughs> so yeah folks, if I can come back a bit further you get to see the whole lot. I hope you're enjoying the stages I'm at. I'm not covering the entire project of the rebuild of the Sierra number no. 3. If you need to, you can contact me via the Kev's workshop website. Go into the contacts page, two different email addresses there, but I can always email you direct. I take a lot of photos on purpose so that I can get references should I need to do it all over again. So, from the Hollywood scene, two famous variations of one famous steam locomotive. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. Do feel free to subscribe to my channel if you like. Feel free to share my videos around with people you know who might be modelling something like this. Always keep an eye on my Kev's Workshop website because you never know what changes I've made. Generally it's on my uh, current projects page and the events page and the main index page. But from here you can actually get an idea you know, what work is ahead of me on these two projects. Back to the Future Part four, oh, part 3 is complete. And I do have the DeLorean that goes with it of course. And if I just come up over to here. Yep. I'll just get it out of the box. Out of the box. There we go. Just to help you people at home. Uh, if you're modelling Back to the Future Part 3, folks, I'll uh, give you an idea the underneath this. Uh, Diecast metal car, yes. That's, uh, I've used HS scale train wheels. I've had to drill the eyelets out, put screws in. And yes, you have to narrow the, the chassis. Just so the HSCO wheels can sit in. That's the biggest part of the cutting away. Modifying the inside to handle the, the model train wheels. And yes, the spokes are actually made of paper of all things, but 
otherwise the solid disc wheels in behind that. But I've added in all the extra details on the back. Okay, I've lost one of my bits of detail. Ah, I think I know where that is. But I've made all the extra details here. Didn't have the Mr. Fusion, didn't have the extra details that I've added in. And nor did it have the new time circuits. But yes, I've made all that up based on other information that I've got. Other photos I've been working to. Direct scenes from the movie. So yes, if I move, I'm sure I'm always doing this place, I'm always moving rubbish out the way to get to other stuff. But if I pull that back to there, put that on the front, there you go folks. Back to Future Part 3 versus Petticoat Junction. Two iconic um, scenes of movie. With an, an iconic steam engine. And I'd like, like to hope I'm inspiring people by doing what I'm doing. Please let me know. Because it's nice to know that I'm giving help to those out there who are researching this sort of thing. I'm just trying to do it correctly and do the thing justice. So, if there's anyone there in Hollywood in America, yeah, anyone in the movie industry who loves what I'm doing, or someone has shown you what I'm doing, I'm hoping that we can keep the movies alive, you know, and keeping the world of model railways alive, and keeping skills alive. So there's plenty more than this, but I hope that um, you'll be inspired, not only in the real world, but for those around the world doing the scale modelling, I hope that um, you're able to achieve something similar to what I have. Many thanks for watching, and um, I'll do another video eventually. Catch ya. As a footnote, <coughs> this is how the two locos are now looking. A few weeks later, then previous bit of recording. Two Sierra number threes side by side. As you see Petticoat Junction and Back to the Future number three. <clears throat> and look at both chimneys which is the focal point of the video. You see the, the differences between them. You see how they were both similarly machined up on the lathe. You can see how they've both been similarly finished. You see I've actually done the top of the, the headlight on this one. That's based on the one that's in the background. You'll notice here that the steam domes are very much slightly different. The one on Petticoat Junction is more so correct. Whereas the one that's on the Back to the Future number 3 loco it's as it was, as made. So there is that slight difference. Got the st steam exhausts on both generators. <clears throat> both of these were missing at the time. And as you can see, the comparison between the tender loads. So, what work I did on the um, <clears throat> on the black serial number three. I've also done on the other one. So the logs sticking out the front. Just like I've done back here. They are as random as I can possibly get them. And they're still running the Tyco X2Fs on the back. At least that one is. This one I've actually converted over to an actual KD. The carriage already had the KD fitted to it. And there's the correct colour scheme for the Petticoat Junction carriage that we've got here. It's carriage number 5 according to the TV series. So all it needs is a, the baggage word at the front end of the carriage. The number 5 on the rear corner. And with the serial number 3, for the fact the information that I've got, 
states that the movie makers changed the 3 to an 8 so then if they had to reverse image any of the footage it would still read as number 8 <coughs> although we are a few weeks after the last lot of video you still see I'm missing the smoke box door that is something that will take me a little bit longer to get working on but for now this is where both locomotives are at as far as their looks and appearances and as you can see even from a photographic point of view this would make a nice dramatic shot if they're both heading towards the camera <coughs> so this will give you an indication of the Tyco Mantua serial number threes as to what they can be done up to look like and yeah I'd, I'd really love to get a third one so realistically if anyone's got one out there that you want to get rid of <laughs> I'll be happily taking it off your hands but uh, I don't really wish to be ripped off so <clears throat> I could always do with spare parts anyhow one moment while I'm thinking about it I do have a loan of another Sierra number three and if I put this over here for you pop this on the track properly if I can I'll just take a bit of tape off the front there's the third Sierra number three <laughs> the trifecta now the thing is, this belongs to a mate of mine, he's not prepared to sell. You see here it's got the original straight stack. And you can see the original details on this one. And again the exhaust is broken off. And there's the load as for the original Casey Jones TV series. So as you can see, throughout the years, they didn't change a great deal. But that's the colour scheme for Casey Jones. So lucky a mate of mine has loaned me this one for a while. He will be getting it back soon, unless I'm going to talk him into uh, selling it to me. But I know he won't. But you can see three Sierra number threes together. So basically, folks... If you've got one of these, I'll be happy to uh, buy it off you, I know, but that would be the trifecta for me, Hollywood style. I hope you have enjoyed watching my video, I hope I haven't been too boring, as far as the uh, talk on how I did my chimneys. But this, I hope, would be a nice lasting effect for those of you modellers out there. Those who are into modelling Hollywood, whether it's in toy car form or train form. And hopefully you'll enjoy what I've tried to achieve. These two here, I bought them. They look nothing like what they look like now. But the realistic shot of having all three of these together is Hollywood in motion as far as I see it. And realistically, when I come around this module as a dramatic shot, you'd have the loco come straight for the camera. They even come powering up past. Just imagine full head of steam, whistles blowing, powering straight past the camera. So folks, I really do hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to get one last look at Doc. Hang on for grim death. <laughs> so I shall leave this with you folks. Many thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed watching what I've done. Thank you and catch you on the next video.